So am I blowing everybody out? Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? It can't, it can't hear me very good. How about now? We're good? Okay, so anyhow, he's going to turn the volume up a little bit um, while I do this. But I want to I wanna start this thing off with, uh, with when you come here, you, you always want to learn something. And it, and it is, anybody watched my seminar before? Anybody ever seen my seminar before? No? No? Hey, Herb. So, so I usually start this seminar off with, with a simple demonstration of tools, tools and techniques. And I, and, and I always like to start off with a jewel that you can take home, keep forever, use it, and it'll make your fishing more enjoyable. Bait casters. Any, any wives here supporting their husbands? Any girlfriends supporting? Thank you, thank you. So, so you need to know that it's important that we have the best equipment, okay? The best equipment. That, that, that's important to us. So yeah, it's kind of like having earrings that match our belts, that match our shoes, accessories. That's what we look for. So anyhow, um, who here likes to use just spinning rods? Anybody? Just spinning rods? Um, okay, they're great. They're, they're awesome. They're a lot of control, a lot of distance. But what they don't have a lot of times is power. And, and it takes a little bit of power to generate like, like a, a bait like this that really needs a lot of a lot of backbone to chunk a, a bait like this to get any distance to move the good heavy line especially with uh with heavier line it's hard to get heavier line on the spinning rod that actually works for you it usually ends up coiled and looks like as what kent says a slinky so so one of the biggest issues for guys is is they don't like to use the casting rods because they always get uh backlashes who, who here gets backlashes Come on, admit it. You, come on, you guys get backlashes. Who here takes a long time to pick their backlashes out? I mean, if, if you're looking at me, I'm wearing glasses now because, because it's tough. I got to tighten off and I can't see very well. My arms are too short. But what I want to show you about, about casting reels is that it doesn't, be, it doesn't have to be a hard job to get um, a backlash out. So the last thing you want to see is someone Go to make a cast, and the reel look like that. Now, that's a backlash, am I, am I right? So you look at that, and you go, oh my. There goes, uh, this is brand new 20 pound test floor carbon. There goes $17, get the scissors. Gonna start cutting it. Don't do it, don't panic. First thing you wanna do is don't pull the line. Okay, don't pull the line. Take, take a breath, hold on to your rod, put your thumb lightly on the top, engage your reel, and just nice and slow, reel up your mess. Reel slow, okay? Nice and easy, and just reel up your mess. It'll get to a point where it stops reeling, you don't want to force it. You get everything kind of tidied up, and then you can start pulling your line out, just to get the last curls out. Don't put your thumb on the line. All it does is shove the, the mess back. Put your thumb on the side of the spool just to put enough pressure on it and just pull the rest of it out. Now, I do this real fast because I'm used to it. I feel the line when it gets bad and then I can stop it. But most people don't. So I can usually pull a backlash out, except for that right there, in, in, in seconds versus the hours it used to took, take me to pick them out. So again, simple. It's a backlash. I, um, if you can't see it from there, we're in trouble. You need better glasses than I do. Again, don't pull on the string. Put your thumb lightly on the outside and just reel in your mess. Nice and easy. Gets to that point. Then just straighten out the top layers of line that you didn't get straightened up. Couple loops in there. and you're back in action, except for that. Okay, so if anything, if you haven't seen that before, that should be worth the price of admission because I'm telling you, you're gonna save miles and miles of fishing line. 
basically what I'm going to talk about today is what we do in what I do fish in northern California lakes I mean I, I tournament fish I don't get to go out and fun fish as much as I like to I, I mean I love fun fishing and when I get a chance I just wreck them I mean I go out and I try and catch everything there is but I, I mainly tournament fish so tournament fishing I'm always looking for the bigger bite what I want to do is kind of cover top to bottom what I'm doing and what I, you know, the equipment I use. Answer any questions for you. Um, you know, there's a lot of myths out there. You can only use a specific bait to do a certain thing. You can only reel it so fast. You can only reel it so slow. So there's a lot of things that are out there that guys get locked in on. And, and I got to tell you, if, if you hear the only way to do it is like this, stop, stop listening and start start thinking something else. Take your information from somebody else. And so if I say, only do it this way, I mean, I only do it that way. Because there's a dozen ways to do it. I mean, Chad Martin's up here. He's throwing a swim bait. And he's doing this like swim bait. And I'll reel it twice as fast, stop it more often. And you know what? He's as successful at tournament fishing as I am. We, we have our layers. We're looking for different fish. So, so that's kind of what the deal is. Um, as far as listening to your information. So who here fishes, uh, let's start with northern area, uh, Shasta, Oroville kind of stuff? Oroville. Is that the worst lake in the world or what? I got a, I got a picture, it's about a, about a five pound spot I caught over there. Shaky head, shaky head. Five foot of water. Nothing special, just go out there, put it out there, leave it in front of them, work the bait, make them eat it. I'm a, I'm a big fan of lots of patience um, and, and, uh, and, and finding out where those fish are feeding. Everybody's throwing dart heads. I mean, you, if you go fish Oroville, Shasta, you're fishing a dart head, right? Dart head. What's wrong with a dart head? I'm snagged up. It's an open hook. So what I did is I changed up. I said, you know what, there's got to be a better way. So I, I, I decided I'd start fishing a shaky head. So I started playing with the shaky heads. A lot of things that they did I liked, and a lot of the things that they did I just didn't like. I just didn't like the way some of them would uh, um, lay over or they'd fall over. I, I wanted a bait that stood up. Not, not like this, but I wanted a bait that really stood up, that I, could, that I could sneak back to the boat, that I could really get the fish to think about that would really make a good presence on the rocks. Something that had good impact. You know, something that when you hit the gravel, you hit the rock, it, it made enough noise that it would do something. So, so I started going up in weight versus lighter in weight, and I found that I was hanging up less because, because I could actually allow the bait to fall over the backside now instead of just stopping and letting it go. The lighter weight wouldn't pull the bait off and I wouldn't be able to pull it over. So I would just sit there and I'd be stuck instead of letting it go and now the weight pulls it down. I, I, I don't know, I just came up with this stuff for me and it, and it started functioning for me. So anyhow, I started throwing a shaky head. One other thing I started doing was is I started throwing on braid. Who throws the braid to fluorocarbon? Anybody? All of my reels, all of my spinning reels, all have braid to fluorocarbon. Why? Because I don't have to. I don't have to spend hundreds of dollars replacing my line. I just replace 20 foot of it, and that's it. I leave the braid on for for uh, three to four months. Depends on where I'm fishing. Whoop. And what I do is uh. If it starts getting water free, I just take it out, I string it around something, I bring it back, I tie it back on my reel, and I reel it in backwards. Now I get another double my life. So not only, not only am I time conscientious, but, but I'm cheap too. I hate buying fish and tackle. I hate it. it. It's just, I know I'm a tackle junkie, I'm recovering, I've got a problem, I admit it. Um, but there's no reason to spend more money unless you have to. So anyhow. One of my biggest things is, is I throw a lot of spinning rods to the point where I've had tendonitis go into tendinosis, treatments, hours and hours and hours of it. But what I find is, is that I have a tendency, because I fish Oroville, I fish Shasta, I fish spotted bass, is I shake the bait a lot. I just, I have a hard time not shaking the bait. And I found that 
for spotted bass, it has a tendency to draw a more aggressive bite. They look at it, they creep up on it, and then they, when they eat it, they eat it. When I just do a drag, that's when you get the Oroville rubber band bite, and you feel it, and you reel that, you feel it, you, your tip is kind of moving, and you set the hook, and you reel it back, and you got that much worm left. I mean, right behind the hook, they, they're, just, they're just negative. What I found is that the more I shake it, when they go up there and they do that negative bite, and they got a hold of it, they creep up on it, they bite it, and I'm still shaking it, they have a tendency to want to straighten it out, and then they, they pop the whole thing in, because it's going to get away. It's not, now it's not just moving like this, and they come up and go like that. It's, it's going away. They're feeling that thing. And when they eat it, they eat it. Now the bites are more positive, and, and they're in, usual, usually. So that's just a tip. When you get into the winter doldrums, like right now, where these fish really start biting the tail, shake the bait. Just shake it. Don't even pull on it. Just shake it, shake it, shake it. And all of a sudden you feel that. Don't reel down, set the hook. So yeah, Shasta, Orville, spotted bass, shaky head worm. One of the things I like to do, whoop, my box isn't open yet. With the same spinning rod, is I like to throw the tube. Now, who throws the tube?